What's cracking guys, JP here again, doing another update of my 20 gallon reef tank. Now today I am just going to go over what I have changed in my uh, tank, my equipment and a couple new addition or experiments. So let's start with the inhabitants. Two weeks ago, I switched my green torch and my gold hammer, just swapped it the location and so far they're loving their new location or their homes. And what I have been seeing is my gold hammer is fully open more often every day than he was up here. I think it was just too high of an intensity of two or too high of a flow. And this is a perfect spot for him. It's just like that in your, if you do have a coral that's not working well in that location, try to move it but not too much. And so far, they're both loving it. I did start dosing some phytoplankton, it's just a regular phytoplankton in a bowl last week and I think it's definitely getting, I'm getting a lot of results like I'm growing a lot more pods in, them, in my tank and I'm not sure if it's contributing the coloration of my gold hammer but I can see some gold tips growing back in this coral. Now, generally, corals do take some time to regain their original color or the color that they have. So, the best thing that you can give the coral is clean water and consistency. So, that's my... Or the other factors too that will give them the best results or best stability. Alright, so the next thing is my GSP is finally taking hold in the glass and as you can see in the very edge there is that little piece in the side it's kinda I can't really see but there is that piece that's growing on the glass and my advice is don't put this on your main rock because it will spread like wildfires and once it does it's hard to take it off so that's my advice one thing is also that if you like your GSP straight the polyps don't put it in high lights because what tends to be is if they are in high lights, their polyps tend to curve. And I, don't, I have it in the very edge right in my tank and look, it's straight. And I had this guy before in the middle of the tank and super high lights and it was curved. So that's my assumption. That's just my opinion. Alright. Next thing is, I have purchased... A, another light diffuser this one is a more uh, appropriate one before I was just using a tracing paper and I heard that paper does have some yellowing compounds and it does discolor your light to the tank so what I have done is I went to Amazon I bought a Roscoe light diffuser or a film diffuser I'll link this in the description and it's basically like a tracing paper but without the yellowing stuff so far it's working. I do notice there was a little bit of a slight tar reduction so I just increased it by 5% of my blue lights and looks like my corals are reacting so much better than that. Why I do this is because my lights is very tiny. It's not as wide as the uh, other lights and it's basically beaming to the middle and the rest of the edge are little to no lights or it drops off very very quick and I don't like the disco ball effect or too much uh, shimmer and looks like this is working so well for me the next thing also is for my LED experiment I did put a bigger LED uh, last update and what it cost was my Chetomorpha was started to turn yellow or very very light white I think because it was too strong and I don't have a lot of nutrients in this tank so that's one thing. I just changed to a very very cheaper LED that's only 9 watts and so far it's kind of experimenting it also on it and so far it's working okay. The next thing is also is I've been having some problems on the JBAO PP4 and what it, what's the problem was is overnight or sometimes it will seize up on me and I don't know if a lot of people have this problem but how I fix this is I basically 
re, uh, put it in lock mode. And what I have found out or start to have these problems is there's a feed mode and a sleep mode in this option. And what I would do is before before I, have, I was having this problem is I would put the feed mode and actually will unplug it. And I think that caused some major problems in the programming and I'm not sure if that's what caused it but that's what my assumption but so far my lock the lock mode has been working so far for me and it haven't seized up especially the flow on me now this is on else on the highest setting and corals is definitely loving the flow it's not too strong as you can see right here is a strong flow but the rocks and my GSP and my frag was right here blocks the flow for my slower flower guys so that's the update for my tank now go to the couple experiments all right on to the next experiment so the first this experiment I have is basically a phytoplankton station now I've set this up last week and my I just got a nano species right here the green war and so far it's I have having success over it last week I did order some ISO and it just turned white on me I'm not sure what I did wrong I heard that the ISO is a lot harder to start on and the no-no is the best for beginner but my assumption is the ISO culture that I received was dead because it smelled funky and it was not very very looking it was a little bit paler or not as gold so that's what my assumption but so far my nano is very successful so this is just a do-it-yourself setup basically I just have an air pump right here it's kind of dark but this is a very simple setup and a lot of people it's a very controversial uh, topic to do some title in your tank many people say it's beneficial many people say it's not but I will do an experiment if it does work in my tank and I will record the updates and uh, results so on to the next experiment alright so to the next project so upstairs in my room I have my new setup it's just a quarantine tank all it costed me was this couple firefish I bought from a local pet store now I already all have my lights my tank this tank is my old 10 gallon reef tank I have my do-it-yourself auto tap off in the back and have a tape to measure the level for the water to keep the salinity stable so a lot of people do recommend and in my opinion it is a must to quarantine your new fish or new corals or new inhabitants you will add to your display tank it will basically save you a lot of headache a lot of wasted money and a lot of effort because in case if you do just add your fish plop, plop it in a display tank and have it then you have a problem because you have to take all your fish out treat it in a separate tank and basically leave the tank fishless for eight weeks or more now in a quarantine tank if you do have egg or I have egg I can treat it and with no uh, worries that I will kill any corals or invertebrates because there's no no corals especially just fake corals so a couple days ago I treated with Prazi Pro because I have I think I have a internal parasite with a smaller firefish because it, it got uh, sunken belly I have a few a lot of experience with sunken belly because I keep with African cichlid and I hope it will work and if it doesn't then I'll do a Prazi Pro with food so I do hear that the recommendation to quarantine your new fish is at least two to three weeks so that's my that's my goal my goal is to keep the fish as disease free as possible and treat uh, if there's any signs or symptoms that will show up and yeah it's pretty simple setup I just have a air pump that's pumping the air right there for my sponge filter I got my smaller pump the heater and a couple firefish now I've heard that the firefish um, it is good to keep just only one in your main tank 
unless you have a bonnet pair or a group so that's just I've heard and I've asked my local pet store that they've been together for over a month in just one tank and there was four of them and they were together most of the time so hopefully they will be a bonded pair if it's not then I can just take it back for free or get a refund so so thanks for watching guys I hope you like my update and thanks for the comments and likes from the subscribers and see you next time adios